Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about Google Cloud Storage. Storage is one of the vital services in any cloud computing platform and I hope by the end of this video tutorial you will know how to work with Google Cloud Storage Bucket. So for those who are totally new to cloud computing and who isn't familiar with the term bucket, then buckets are basic containers that hold your data in cloud storage. You basically put all kind of files in the bucket in, in this bucket and these files are known as objects. You can also create folders in bucket and then you can add your objects or files to folders. Imagine your bucket as a big big wardrobe. So what do you do with the wardrobe? You put everything inside your wardrobe, okay? And what if you want to organize your wardrobe? What do you do to organize your wardrobe? You create different sections. Like you might create a section for your shoes, for your party clothes, for your casual clothes or for your cosmetics. Similarly, if you want to organize your bucket, you create folders and then you put everything inside your folders. In this video, we'll learn to create, utilize and manage cloud storage buckets first in the console and then using the command line. So to create a bucket, you need to have a project. Remember, you can use and allocate resources only in a project. If you already have an existing project, you can follow this tutorial using the same or if you don't have one, then you can see my previous video on creating custom VPC network to learn about projects and how to create them. So to get started, we'll select the project we want to work in. So my project is already start, uh, selected. So I want to work in test project. We'll click on this navigation menu or it is also known as hamburger icon. We'll scroll down to storage and then storage and then browser. So to create a bucket, we'll click on create bucket. We'll give it a name. So this name that we give must be globally unique. So I'm going to what if what happens when you create a bucket that might be already existing with a different user maybe or with a different account. So this name must be globally unique across the whole Google Cloud platform. So what if I create a bucket with my bucket or my bucket. Will this allow us to create? No, because it says that bucket name is already taken. Try another. So I'm going to create it with my tutorial demo bucket 2020. So perfect. This is globally unique. Next. We are going to go and choose where to store your data. We get three options, region, multi-region, dual region. So a region is a specific geographical place, place like Mumbai. Uh, dual region is a specific pair of regions such as Finland and Netherlands. And multi-region is a large geographical area such as United States that contain two or more geographical places. So in case of dual region and multi-region, you get maximum availability of your data. Even in the event of large-scale large, large scale disruptions such as natural disasters, your data is available because they are present at more than one places. So for this demo, I am just going to select region and then the location I am going to select as Mumbai. Moving on to next, we have choose a default storage class for your data. So if we get four options here, standard, near line, cold line and archive. If you want to know the differences between these four options, I will mention the link in the description box. Or I can also create another video on this topic. Do comment if you want a video on different storage classes. So for this, I am just going to be with standard 
moving next moving on to next we have choose how to control access to objects so we get two options fine grained and uniform if you select uniform then the permissions and access on all the objects in the bucket remain same and if you choose fine grain then you can individually control the permissions and access that you want to set on each object in the bucket so for this I'm just going to click on uniform and then let's see the advanced options we get I'm not going to start with encryption in this video retention is something that I want you guys to be familiar with so if a bucket has a retention policy then all current and future objects in the bucket can only be deleted or overwritten once their age is greater than the retention period we set so set a retention policy to specify the minimum duration that this bucket objects must be protected from deletion or modification after they are uploaded. You might set a policy to address industry specific retention challenges. So for now, I do not want to set a retention policy. I can set a retention policy at the time of creating a bucket or also I can set a retention policy after creating a bucket. For now, I am not going to set any kind of retention policy and I am just going to click on create. So did you have a question in mind what if I just you know click on create bucket give it a random name and what if I don't go through all the steps and I just click on create what happens then so what happens then is your bucket gets created in US region and the type of uh, the place where your data is stored is US and it gets stored in multi-region and you have a default storage class of standard storage with no retention policy defined. Do keep this in mind. It is very useful just in case someone asks you what if I don't go through the uh, through the process through all four or five steps what if I just um, give a name to a bucket and click on create. So you do know now that it is created in US region and it is a multi regional bucket that is created and the storage class by default is standard. So we have successfully created the bucket Let, let's now see how we can add some objects or file to this bucket. To upload files we will simply click on upload files and then we can select the file from the from a local machine from a laptop so I'm just uh, selecting a picture file from my desktop folder and there we go we can see the file I uploaded next I'm going to upload a folder maybe I want to upload this folder new folder too and I'll just click on upload and the upload has started you can see the folder here so this if you're uploading some folder or if your bucket has a folder it has this icon and if you have an object in your bucket or in your folder then this is the icon that you get that you get with an object to create a folder we'll just click on create folder and we'll give this the name my my folder and then simply we'll click on create and a folder will be created so what if i want to you know set this bucket to publicly accessible bucket what will I do right now the my bucket is not publicly accessible to 
change it into publicly accessible I'll click on this permissions tab and then I'll add members I'll click on add members so under new members we'll type all users in the same format A should be small U should be capital and then we'll select the role so role will be storage and then storage object viewer storage object viewer so read access to GCS Google Cloud Storage Objects and then I'm going to click on save so now you can see my uh, bucket is now public it is publicly accessible moving back what if I want to rename this if I want to rename this file or object I'll click the checkbox next to it to select it and I'll then click on these three dots and then I can rename move copy download to rename I'll just click on rename and then I want to change it to one dot jpeg and then rename 